I always considered the CDC to be the gold standard. I don't anymore. I think the conflicting, confusing guidance from your agency has undermined public confidence and contradicts the scientific guidance of many experts. Republican Senator Susan Collins taking CDC Chief Dr. Rochelle Walensky to task over that bombshell report in the New York Times, which found the agency exaggerated the risk of outdoor COVID transmission. One quote here, there is not a single documented COVID infection anywhere in the world from casual outdoor interactions, such as walking past someone on a street or eating at a nearby table. Radio talk show host Jason Rance. Jason, great to see you. I don't know if you just heard uh, Steve Scalise, representative, saying that, look, the CDC is in trouble because the questions are serious. They, they are. I mean, when you see this kind of data coming from The New York Times, media outlets in general that have basically been going with the press releases coming out from the CDC and the Biden administration this entire time, I think you can generally uh, tell that things are starting to change. When we are not getting clear guidance while at the same time being told it's incredibly important to get the vaccine because that's the only way we're going to turn things around, it's going to confuse people. I asked the question here in Washington state, for example, well, OK, what is the outdoor transmission rate just in Washington? How many cases have we had where people got covid outside? Because I'm seeing a lot of people still wearing masks, despite the fact that we have a relatively high rate of vaccines in arms. The answer I got was, I don't know. They don't actually track it in Washington. Lots of states, mm. if not all of the states, they're not tracking the outdoor transmission rate. So when we were promised that all of these mandates that we're getting on masks or anything is going to be based on the data, going to be based on the science, and then you're telling me that you're not actually tracking it because it's essentially too hard to track, well, then what are you coming up with this mandates? What's the basis for the mandates? Why are we still wearing masks outside? Why is it that in Washington state where we have vaccinated only sections in stadiums that you're still outdoor stadiums telling people that they have to wear a mask? That doesn't make any sense. We have to get to some semblance of normalcy here. And every single day that we keep these mandates in place that are not based in science is another day that we're getting away from people who are going to start just basically saying, yeah, I'm not going to follow the science that you're telling us exists because we don't trust you anymore. And that's going to be a long term problem. Yeah, well, that's a case of they're not going to follow what they're being told. They'll follow science yeah. because they can read it themselves. I mean, my sixth grader does. OK, yeah. does the Biden White House control what we read about them? A new report, Jason, says that the administration is demanding the opportunity to edit quotes from the administration officials before they are published. Politico wrote this. In practice, that means the information from an interview can be used in the story, but in order for the person's name to be attached to the quote, the reporter must transcribe the quotes they want and then send them to the communications team to approve that veto or edit them. Jason, your take. Yeah. So here's what the White House is going to do. They're going to use some of this as defense because some of this is normal. So when you have an interview and it's on background and you're trying to convince someone to do it on the record, there is a little bit yes. of wheeling and dealing going on. And you'll say, OK, can I use this part on the record? I want to make sure that I got this quote correctly. And you do a little bit of that behind the scenes. Where this is going too far, as you read this Politico report, is that the White House is trying to get them to change the narrative. So they're saying, OK, let me look at this quote. If we don't think this quote is a good enough reflection of what we at the White House want the narrative to be on whatever the topic happens to be, well, we're going to switch it around. And if you don't want it, then you can't use it. That's not acting in good faith. And that's why you have some of these reporters finally speaking up that Politico is talking about something that is, is relatively routine, means it's no longer routine. It's now crossing the line from that routine into relative propaganda coming from this White House. And in this piece, it also goes into the point where the Biden or uh, the uh, Obama administration did this as well. So we're starting to see some of the old practices at play. And this is them trying mm. to take control of the narrative, which you know, is rather telling because the media generally kind of sides with them already. Huh. 
Well, the, the journalism point that you started with is so important. There's a difference between going on background or off the record and trying to pull some of that, that information into the public sphere. And there is a bit of a go back and forth between what goes mm -hmm. on the record now. But that's completely different than saying, I'm going to say that the president's, well, I don't want to pick on his dogs, but the, the dog did something. And it's on the record, and we're going with this, and the White House wants to try to what? You know, change that. That's just a, my own makeup in my head example. Unfortunately, there are dogs involved, but we'll move on. Uh, the entire school board in Oklahoma City is going after a new law banning the teaching of critical race theory in public schools, calling it an insult and racist. Let's watch. I'll get Jason's take on the other side. This is definitely an insult. It is, a, it is a situation that is so egregious to me is that for us to, to continue to try to shut the voices down of people in order to protect white fragility, it is sad. The bill prohibits public schools and universities from teaching that, quote unquote, one race or sex is inherently superior to another or that someone is inherently racist, sexist, or oppressive because of their race or sex. Jason. Yeah, that's not controversial at all. That it is controversial is more instructive about the person who <laughs> believes it's controversial. The goal here is to villainize the country's founders. It's, again, to pretend that white supremacy infects every fiber of this country's being. And its end goal is to dismantle so-called systems of, of oppression and then rebuild it in the image that the people behind critical race theory and all other far left progressive ideals would like this country to be built. That is the goal and they're using young kids to do their bidding. It is pretty odious, but that is what it is they're doing and that's why I'm so glad that parents across the country are finally speaking up and pushing back. Yeah, they're, they're fighting hard for this. I mean, teach the yep. facts. You don't have to editorialize around them. All right, Jason Rance, great to have you on the program. A lot of big topics to cover with you today. Thank you. Thanks, Harris.